Sweet. Okay. Okay. Jane Depp, very pleased to meet you here in London. Um, your character, Sam, appears a little bit like uh, a mystery and uh, an extraterrestrial in the, the life of uh, Benny and June. Then, how to prepare or to create uh, such a character when we don't know the past, we don't know really the history of the character? Oh, uh, hmm. How? Good question. How? Uh, I don't know, you know, uh, for me, Sam was a guy who. who had difficulty uh, dealing with people on on uh, a normal or on what is perceived as a normal level, and his way of dealing was to escape into the into the, sort of the world of Buster Keaton or the wor world of Chaplin. Um, probably one of those kids who had severe learning disability who, who withdrew himself from society and kind of uh, just made up his own rules, you know. There is, of course, uh, a physical work for these sketches, these clone uh, attitudes. Then, how to, uh, how did you work on that? On the physical stuff, mm -hmm. uh, I hurt myself. I hurt myself a lot. Um, you know, just uh, I just worked on the Keaton stuff uh, that, that wasn't necessarily taken directly out of a Keaton movie or anything. Just just stuff that felt like Keaton. Um, just worked on them, you know, flips and this and that. The roll dance was kind of difficult because that's that's a direct ripoff from Chaplin. That's right out of the Gold Rush, you know. So that was real intimidating to do that. So I don't know. I didn't want it to be a, a direct yank. So I just kind of tried to do my own thing with it. What's the what's the line? What's the borderline between? A tribute and a and a copy and an impersonation. What's the how to to manage that? Well, it, that that was the, one of the most important things to me that it wasn't uh, that it wasn't like a Keaton biography, you know. That it was uh, that it was more of an homage to to Keaton. That it was more of a, a kind of salute to Keaton for me, you know. But you know, I I just got to sort of flop around and you know do stupid stuff for a little while. What was your feeling when you discover again these brilliant silent movies? And did you did you think on the the actual movies? Did you, did you make a comparison between the the old one and the, the new one? Oh yeah, I mean Keaton, the stuff that Keaton was doing back in the 1920s was, uh, I mean some of that stuff is is still untouched. I mean the stuff that can't be done today, or that people. They don't have the, they don't have that drive. They don't have that hunger today. The Keaton had. Nobody's. Everybody. People are afraid to take risks, and there's no reward if you don't take a risk. Um, Keaton's films and the and and his acting. I mean, the stuff that he could say, with a gesture, with just uh, with just moving his head a certain way, or uh, or looking a certain way. You know, moving his eyes. This, what he could say. Just with that, with that sort of silent, that glance is is much more important than any huge monologue he could have spewed out. I, I saw the movie as a really brilliant and uh, moving tribute to the these silent movies too. It's not the only aspect of the movie, of course, but uh, can you explain? Do you have an idea why it's impossible to to find again this innocence, this this poetry now? Now and mm. film today, mm. because I th well back then what what they were able to do. Nobody had any real, you know, serious knowledge <coughs> of filmmaking. Nobody, you know, there would be a guy and they'd say, "Listen, we're going to take this camera, go out and film some stuff. What are you going to film? I don't know what we're going to film, but could we have a little money to buy film and stuff?" And that's what would happen. Keaton did he did those things without scripts. He did them, just, you know, from his brain in the moment. Today, there's so much money involved in filmmaking, and it's such a business that I think somewhere along the way, they lost the, the sense of, of uh, you know, the spontaneity and the, and the art, you know, where the real life comes in. This sort of, you know, the, the inhale, the exhale, you know, they, it's, been, it's been sort of misplaced. But there's still, I mean, there's still people who do that. I mean, there's people like Jim Jarmusch, I think, who, who, who everything he does is is 
every film he does is kind of there's a freshness and a, and, a, and a real honesty to it. And there's you know there's still people like Scorsese and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but those people, I guess, are few and far between these days. On one hand, in this movie, there is this very prepared aspect, the physical aspect, and on the other hand, oh, was it possible to improvise, to, to try things with the, the other actors? Because the, yeah. the it's a film uh, on characters, not there is a story, but the characters are so important that it was possible to improvise? Yeah, in fact, there's a lot of improvisation in the movie, a lot of it, a lot of stuff that they left that they left in, because we would sort of try the scripted version and stuff, and maybe it looks great on paper, but it doesn't necessarily carry through in real life, you know, or, or in with two people connect, you know, trying to connect. So yeah, there was a lot of improvisation and a lot of room. I mean, the atmosphere on the set was great because it was kind of, it, it just, there was a real magic as far as people being able to try things that weren't necessarily the obvious things. And, um, yeah, it was a great atmosphere. And there is this equilibrium between drama and dramatic themes and more uh, funny, more lighter uh, scenes. Then how to to keep the balance between the two aspects? It's It was the work of the director or the work of, of, of the cast, too? I think it was, I think it was a... Uh, well, ultimately, I mean, the director has the final choice because he, he edits the film and he's there, you know, with it every, it's his baby. But, um, I mean, I think it was a real collaboration, not only between the, the director and, and the actors, but the crew, I mean, the, the camera guys, I mean, the sound guys, everybody, there was a, the general feeling was, was, was a, a, a sort of sense of freedom, so it wasn't, even for the actors to be able to have an atmosphere of of of, uh, of taking a risk, or you know, it was for the cameraman. I mean, they, he would sort of say, "Well, what if we did this?" You know, and he would. It was really, really a rare time, and especially for a studio film. You know, MGM was real brave and real. Uh, they just, you know, just left us alone. It's interesting you you talk about the studio film because <coughs> when we when we look at your career, we see. Uh, I see a link be uh, between Cry Baby, Edward Scissorhands, uh, this movie. It's in the system and also outside the system because it's not like common Hollywood young comedy. Then uh, it's a little bit deliberate choice or it's a, a question of coincidence and at good encounters? Um, uh, hmm. Well, these are guys, these, these, these characters and, and these scripts are just are things that I responded to in one way or another, and and there's a, I guess there's a con there's a sort of a a, a, a a string sort of connecting them all. Um, as far as as far as doing f films that are that are sort of um, in there and sort of out there at the same time, uh, I've just been real lucky. I mean, I've been really lucky. To work with the people I worked with, and to to do these films that are that end up, you know, doing okay at the box office. I mean, that balance is not real simple. It's real complicated to do. <coughs> um, what, generally, I mean, when I read a script, if if I if I respond to it, um, most of the time they're not your obvious kind of commercial movies or, or what one would think would be a commercial movie um, and the fact that people go and see them is pretty good I'm, I'm glad we have the we had the surprise at the good surprise to discover you in European production Arizona dream mm -hmm. Kusturica. yeah you see difference between the European old European mentality and the American system you see a, a real oh yeah difference? Absolutely. One Big time. difference. Well, I mean, this is real general to say, but I mean, at this point, I would say that the European film industry is, is uh, there's less boundaries. You know, you have, uh, everything's a bit wider, so you can, you can, there's more room for experimentation, really. I mean, in, in your basic, 
American movie. I mean, unfortunately, America, I mean, relies on formulas and stuff like that, which, for me, tend to get a bit boring. I mean, I, I go for like a year without seeing a movie, without going and paying money to go and sit in a theater because it just they just bore me. Um, but there's a yeah, there, there, there's a much, there's a more of a sense of what probably what those guys were feeling back in the twenties, what Keaton and Chaplin were doing. There's more of a freedom. Last thing, uh, you have, a, of course, uh, I've, uh, everything is on the look and the image today, and you have, of course, the image of a sometimes a male sex symbol. I suppose it's difficult and sometimes boring to bear for an actor. Uh, well, I, I don't, I don't really, I mean, for me, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, feel like that. I don't, I don't really, I, if there's any sort of image that, that I might have or something, it's, it's not, it's what somebody else placed on me. It's not anything that I've concocted and tried to run with. Uh, if there's any kind of image that I have, I, I would, I would say I just try to fight images. I, I try to, to, uh, to stay away from any sort of stamp or any sort of label because I think they're real limiting and dangerous ultimately. So. Well, thank you for this. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.